All right, guys. So we're going to move on to the next part of the lesson now. Um, what we're going to do is have a look at um, some volcanoes and some science. So what we're going to have a look at is how volcanoes are created, where they are located, and how are they measured. What I'm looking for is your understanding on what causes volcanoes, why they are located where they are, and why it is important that the explosions are measured. And this is because you're going to do a research task later in the lesson. So first of all, we all know that volcanoes are formed from a rupture in the crust of a planet, and it allows molten rock or magma to come up through a magma chamber up to the surface. But what we need to explore further is what causes volcanoes to erupt. So Earth's rigid outer shell, also known as the lithosphere, is divided into segments called tectonic plates. And these plates are slowly moving either toward each other or away from each other. And they are moving so slow that none of them are moving faster than 10 centimetres a year. Australia's is moving at about 7 centimetres a year. So, tectonic plates lie on top of the endosphere, a layer of hot weak, in upper, hot, weak rock in the upper mantle. Rock from the subductive plates form, melts to form molten magma, which pushes its way towards the surface, forming a magma chamber, just like over here. This increase in um, the gases that have been dissolved in the magma chamber expand and cause a massive increase in pressure. This pressure then causes the magma to rise and force its way through the cracks in the volcano above. As it reaches the surface, pressure is released and the eruption occurs, just like at the top there. So during an ex ex eruption, volcanic ash, rock particles, dust, gases and lava are all ejected. And how violent the eruption is depends on the amount of silica present in the magma. Now silica produces a thicker magma, which we learned in our previous lesson, and it depends um, also on how much gas is trapped from the silica. The more gas that's present the, is the greater amount of pressure. Therefore, the more silica present in the magma, the more violent the eruption will be. But not all volcanic eruptions are explosive. Volcanoes also have violent eruptions that just produce something called um, tephra which is also volcanic ash, all up into the air, just like this. Some volcanoes have never erupted also in human history. Which brings us to the next point. There are three different types of volcanoes. Can anyone tell me what those three types might be? Yeah, Bella, what do you reckon? Yep, there are active volcanoes, perfect. What's another one? Yep, extinct, perfect. Now there's one in the middle. Who can tell me the one in the middle? Yep. Dormant. Perfect. Love it. What does it mean for a volcano to be active? That's right. It means it erupts constantly. It's constantly erupting, not obviously all the time, but it does erupt. What does dormant mean? Right, it means that it doesn't, it might not have erupted yet, but it could in the future or it has recently and might not for a really long time. What about extinct? Who can tell me what extinct means? Anything by the photo? That's right, it means it hasn't actually erupted ever in human history. So, to measure how explosive volcanoes are, there is a special scale we use called the Volcanic Explosivity Index, and it describes the size of volcanic eruptions based on the magnitude and intensity and it uses a numerical scale from 0 to 8 and 8 is, um, eight is the highest and 0 being the lowest and, it measured, um, and it's based on the ejected volume of lava within the explosion. So we obviously know that volcanoes are very dangerous and can be very dangerous for the communities that surround a volcano. So it is important that locals do be aware of when there's going to be an eruption, right? Absolutely. Because each volcano is different and in different countries and different tectonic plates all around the world, there are many different warning signals and systems used to tell people just how dangerous these volcanoes are. 
So physical features of a volcano that will change if a forecast is going to be erupted could be earthquakes built by the pressure that we were talking about earlier from the gases, noticeable steam or new areas of new hot ground, swelling from the ground from the surrounding ground, and also small changes in the heat flow. Now these physical indicators do not tell us how big the explosion is going to be or when the explosion is actually going to occur, but they do give us a little bit of a guide into warning signals of an, an explosion could be imminent. Countries with active volcanoes such as Indonesia, New Zealand, Russia, Alaska and Vanuatu and Colombia all have their own warning alert level systems. Each of them have a colour coordination and description of um, the volcanoes and each of them you'll notice are different because each volcano is different, each country is different, the climate, everything. So they've each got their own different descriptions and colour coordination systems. So, I've all emailed you um, these as well because you're going to use these in the research task coming up in a minute. So, now we know a little bit more about volcanoes, I want you to find out some more information that's specific to a volcano. What I want you to do is I'm going to give you each a star which has a volcano's name on it, randomly assigned, and you are going to find out some facts for me about it, including where the volcano is in the earth. Could be on land or in the ocean, don't get fooled by that. When did it last erupt? So that tells me if it's active, dormant or extinct. What caused the volcano to erupt? What was the volcanic explosivity index? Did the locals receive a warning? And what was the alert system used for this volcano, if it's relevant to you? So I don't want you coming up to me and saying that it doesn't work for you, that yours doesn't have a country that aligns to it, that's fine. And if you can't find something like the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or if the locals received a warning, maybe tell me something about how many casualties there were or something that maybe can tell us, did they get a warning or not? Alright everyone, thank you for coming up and putting your stars up on the board, that's excellent, and telling us all your awesome facts about your different volcanoes. Alright, so can we have a now have a look at our world map with all of our stars on it? Who can tell me a little bit of a mm, bit of a common thing going on with our stars here? Yeah, what do you reckon? They're all on boundaries, aren't they? Well, most of them are all on boundaries. Look at these ones falling along here. They look great. All right. So now we are going to have a look at why they might be on the red lines. So this is because, as we already spoke about, some of these tectonic plates are moving together and some of them are moving apart. So divergent plates are the plates that are moving apart from each other. Who had one of these as um, a reason why some of their volcanoes were created with their, their own divergent tectonic plates. Yeah, you did, Jackson. Awesome. That's great. Love it. So, um, an example of this one is Mount Kilimanjaro over here is actually a di on a divergent tectonic plate that is moving apart. So, with divergent volcanoes, they only happen on land and they happen when new magma or molten rock rises and erupted, erupts violently. But when the plates are moving together, this is called convergent plate boundary. And this happens, I'm going to show you a diagram. So, this is a little confusing, stay with me here. As the denser plate, move, um, as the plates collide together, the denser plate will sink beneath the plate that is less dense. As the denser plate moves downwards, the pressure and the temperature surrounding it increases, which puts pressure and, look, and rising temperatures on the mantle and melts some of the rock through the plate. This happens over millions and millions of years. Um, and the rising magma, magma creates series of volcanoes just like over here. So, who can tell me back on here which is a volcano that is not on a tectonic, not on a tectonic plate boundary? 
Yep. That's right. No, the lower over here is not on a boundary at all. It is all by itself over here in Hawaii, and Hawaii is on what they call a hot spot. This means that volcanoes are formed from a column of, some, of superheated magma called a magma plume, and the heat from the plume causes melting and thinning of the crust, leading to volcanoes being created. Awesome work, guys. You did great on that research project. So now we're going to move on to creating our word wall and new vocabulary for the lesson.